What's up, folks? It's time to give you an update on Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. First of all, I'm going to be referring to that as Tico going forward because it's easier to pronounce. We have, or just faster, really. We have gotten a bunch of updates revealed through a bunch of website articles, Twitter posts, and a bunch of other things that give us a ton more information on what's going on. So I'll be going through articles from Nerdarchy, Inverse, IGN, Polygon, Sci-Fi, Gizmodo, and uh, Gaming Trend. Also, a big shout out to Chaos Esper on Reddit who compiled all this information. And I'm gonna give you some speculation that I've gathered from some research that I've done myself. First thing I would like to do up front is just say I don't like the name, right? It feels derivative of Xanathar's Guide of Everything, right? We already have and of everything. And Wizards of the Coast had this whole process where they wanted to um, try to make the books sound more like something you would find in the world rather than like, you know, going Player's Handbook 2 or, you know, races of whatever, all these different things. So they had done that in the past where their books were just source books. So they said we wanted to make them seem more like a thing you could find in the world, right? Sword Coast Adventures Guide, Volo's Guide to Monsters, Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes, that kind of a thing. So Xanathar's Guide to Everything. This is now Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. What the hell am I supposed to do with a cauldron? Also, Tasha, not specifically known for cauldrons in her lore, that could obviously change in the course of this book, but that being said, um, I thought I would bring that up. Uh, also, again, we could have made it Tasha's Cauldron of everything else. She's known for writing books like the Demonomicon. Obviously, that might not fit the theme of this, but like, I don't know... Tasha's Tremendous Treatise. I don't know, something, right? Give us something. Witch Queen's Codex. I don't know, something. Um, anyway, uh, so I just wanted to get that out of the way up front. It is confirmed to be a hundred and, uh, 192 pages, which is the exact page count of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So if you can picture Xanathar's Guide, this should be about the same. Actually, it should be exactly the same. Um, so that being said... I wanted to go through what we have so far and then my speculation. So I've read through all of the articles and I can confirm and add it to this post here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'll talk about confirmed classes, but what you need to know right here is 22 new subclasses coming to this book, including an additional above and beyond that 22 five reprinted subclasses. Those five reprinted subclasses are the Order Domain uh, Cleric, Circle of Spores Druid, College of Eloquence Bard, Oath of Glory Paladin, and Blade Singer Wizard. So some things to consider, Do uh, Order Domain and Circle of Spores are contained in Ravnica. That's gonna bring them from Ravnica into this book, so you'll have them together. Eloquence, uh, Bard, and Glory Paladin is an interesting choice because those were just released in Mythic Odysseys of Theros, which just came out. So I can see how that's definitely going to piss some people off if they only bought this book for the two subclasses. And then this book that's coming out later, which is going to have a ton more options, is going to reprint those. Uh, and then it's also going to... Uh, have Bladesinger, which is a huge, crazy thing. Bladesinger, one of the remaining few subclasses that lives in Sword Coast Adventures Guide that was left behind. A lot of ones were sampled and taken out, like the Sun Soul uh, Monk and the two different uh, Swashbuckler and uh, you know, Mastermind Rogue. So they're going to bring Bladesinger forward into this. What I don't know and I'm hopeful for is maybe some adjustments to that class. Really, adjustments to any of these classes is a potential option when they are reprinted in this new book. They could tweak and adjust issues that people have had with them over time. Will they do it? Probably not, is my guess. But maybe they will, and that could be interesting. Um, okay, so other things to touch on. There will be new feats, um, and there's a new lineage system. We'll talk about the lineage system uh, in, in pretty excess because there's a lot there. Uh, so there was that unearthed arcana that introduced a bunch of summoning spells like summon x spirit or whatever 
uh, it says at least nine conjuration spells will be added from that summoning list. So again, you can click this and this will take you, I think, to a Facebook post that somebody did from Wizard, you know, that got the inside scoop. Um, beast masters are getting three primal beast options for their companions. So that's going to expand a little bit. Doesn't whether address whether it fixes base ranger issues or beast master in general, but they're giving them three additional options, which is, hey, acknowledgement that they're saying once again, there are issues with the beast master. Let's try and fix it. Uh, so I know I have my long awaited uh, ranger fix video i may wait till after november now to see what adjustments they make in this book and then release mine after that if the need is still there um options to use sidekicks all right so sidekicks were introduced in the essentials kit i don't think it went very far uh, as far as levels go this is full-blown sidekick rules and from what it says you can also use these as player classes so if you wanted to play a sidekick yourself uh, and like use a level one to 20 class, whether it's like warrior, expert, or spellcaster, I guess that's an option. Maybe this is kind of similar to like how you could in theory play a commoner class in older editions of D&D. Um, we know that the artificer is going to be reprinted in full in this book, because how are you going to release a subclass for it in this book when you'd have to go to the Eberron Rising from the last war book to get the base class. Now that was a common thing in old editions. You'd have to cycle through multiple books. That's not really fifth edition's MO. So Artificer is going to be reprinted. That was one thing that I did predict. So that makes sense here. Uh, we're going to get that and then we'll get the additional subclass from it as well. Um, let's see what else we have. New feats. Again, we talked about that briefly. Um, oh, they're going to de-eberonize the artificer so that it can fit in a, it's sort of world agnostic uh so anything that was tied specifically to eberron will be removed and adjusted and tweaked for what you'll see here uh they're also bringing in and i misspoke in the last video the group patron concept was from eberron rising from the last war they're again decoupling that from eberron to add the concept of group patrons in to anywhere in any game uh, they are adding new magical terrains and environments. One of the common ones that everybody seems to key on is the idea of a mimic colony. We'll talk more about that in a second when we dive into the articles. Um, there will be some new magical artifacts, new named spells, specifically two are listed that were Tasha spells. Um, and then they're also going to be some class specific spell items which is good because we have talked about how there's been a lack of items specific to different classes and it seems like they are like spell focuses so we have a couple of them that i have listed here the bell branch which is like a, a tree limb a magical tree limb for druids and warlocks um the uh a, a spell book that is disguised as a romance novel that is full of illusion spells for wizard uh for wizards and extra planar like charged crystals for sorcerers uh, and they are all magic items. I guess they can be used as spell foci, but they also will allow you to cast a bunch of extra spells using your or using charges without using spell slots, which is interesting because it sounds like they're making, you know, this is nothing different than what we already have, but it seems like they're like, oh, spellcasters need more versatility. So let's make a bunch more options for them to make them not have to use their spell slots, which is an interesting stance to take. Um, and I think that's pretty much obviously several new infusions for artificers uh, as well as the full reprint. Um, so that's kind of the general high level stuff. So we'll dive more into the articles because there's a lot of cool art to look at as well. So we have confirmed in several of these articles corroborate that there are those five reprints are not included in the 22 confirmed new subclasses. I think I know what exactly those 22 are. We have 100% confirmed the Armor Artificer, the Creation Bard, the Psionic Soul Sorcerer, and the Genie Warlock. So those four are definitely confirmed. And I went through and I read through every single Unearthed Arcana that had come out. And I came up with what I think will be the final list of the classes contained in this book. I'm going to tell you up front, I do not believe that the Spirits Bard or the Undead Warlock will be in this book. My assumption based on that is that they just came out this month 
and that means it's too close of a time to get playtesting in to print a book that's coming out in November. Those will likely be part of a new book coming out next year, the one that we know is going to be tied to Vistani and, you know, Barovia, whatever, that'll they'll be in that book. So because I did the math and it actually works out exactly to 22, here's what I think. We are going to get the Armor Artificer, that's one, Wild Soul and Beast Path Barbarians, that's three, the Creation Bard, we know we're going to get, that's four. We're going to get the Twilight and Unity Cleric, that's going to put us to seven, so, I'm sorry, six? Let me do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, sorry. The Wildfire and Stars Druid, that's those two, is going to put us at eight. We are going to get the Rune Knight Fighter, which will put us at nine. Now, remember, we had the Psychic Warrior Fighter, and then that was revised in a one to become the Psy Knight Fighter. I think it's definitely confirmed that anything that was revised will absolutely be in here. So the Psy Knight gives us 10. Uh, also, they stated that there will be nothing new, like out of the blue, that we haven't seen before. We will only be seeing uh subclasses in here that were already play tested in an arthur Connor. there won't be anything that's brand new so that's 10 with the cyanite astral self and way of mercy monk oath of the watchers paladin because funnily enough there was only one paladin released in all of the unearthed arcana uh the only other one was the college of glory which became the college of heroism or whatever it was that's printed in theros that's already out uh, so it's got to be the Oath of Watchers Paladin because there's no other Paladin option for you, which puts us at 13. Swarm Keeper and Fey Wanderer Rogue, that puts us at 15. Uh, we had the Revived Rogue, which was uh, adjusted into the Phantom Rogue, which will be 16. The Soul Knife, which was revised to, uh, which was just a revised, got revised, Soul Knife Rogue. Uh, we already know that the Psionic Soul Sorcerer was confirmed. The Clockwork Soul Sorcerer as well puts us at 18. The Lurker... I, actually, I might have done the math wrong here. The Lurker in the Deep um, Warlock puts us at 20. The Genie Warlock puts us at 21. And the only remaining wizard class that we or subclass that we know exists out there is the archivist wizard, which puts us at twenty-two, uh, because we know for a fact that the psionic and onomancy wizards were cut. So that's my guess: is those are the twenty-two new subclasses we will receive. We'll have to see if I'm right, but I'll go down that list one more time. So that'll be the armor artificer, the wild soul and beast barbarian the Creation Bard, the Twilight and Unity Cleric, the Wildfire and Stars Druid, the Rune Knight and Psy Knight Fighter, the Astral Self and Mercy Monk, the Watcher's Paladin, the Swarm Keeper and Fey Wanderer Rogue, I'm sorry, Ranger, Swarm Keeper, Fey Wanderer Ranger, the Phantom and Soul Knife Rogue, the Psionic Soul and Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, the Lurker in the Deep and Genie Warlock, and the Archivist Wizard. I'm just going to do one more count and make sure that is 22. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So there you go. That's my call on what I think will be the 22 new subclasses. So now let's start to dive a little bit into the articles and see what we can pull out of this. So first we're gonna go to the Nerdarchy article. Uh, we had saw the little bit about, they mentioned about all the classes gonna be in there. Here's a picture of an artificer uh, with their Eldritch Cannon. It says it's gonna be split into four different um, chapters, character options, spells and magic items, group patrons, and tools for DMs. So it sounds like this is going to be similar to the uh, This Is Your Life section of Xanathar's Guide, but expanded quite a bit. Uh, I don't think the Nerdarchy one has as much information on the lineage system, but introduces a new way to approach playing characters and adventures in 5e. Um, other changes we can expect are the removal of negative racial modifiers from races from Volo's Guide, specifically the Kobold 
and the orc. We know that the orc will likely be reprinted as it is in both Wildmount and Eberron, so they're going to probably do something similar with the Cobalt by removing the negative racial trait and giving it something else. I'm hoping that means it won't just be like we remove the negative racial trait and just give it a plus one to something else. Uh, I'm hoping for removals of things like the grovel, cower, and beg thing because that the connotation maybe isn't that great. Uh, I also did a fixing video on kobolds where I put in adjustments how I thought we could make it better. Uh, I'm curious to see if any of that stuff makes it into uh, their final product. That would be cool. Um, and they also said they wanted to treat them separate monstrous adventurers. That's why they're in a separate chapter. Uh, with other options that are considered more powerful, like UNT and to a lesser extent goblins. Uh, because this context is lost, the way many people play 5e, we decided to, you know, we learned our lesson and we're going to adjust. Uh, the lineage system offers tools to create characters not bound by a species archetype. Um, I guess Jeremy Crawford, there was a press briefing where he kind of fell everybody in and he told people, if you basically want to play Elfie McElpherson, you can play the player's handbook version of an elf. Uh, but the lineage system offers you a way to disentangle characters, personality traits, and cultural traits. Uh, it's supposed to be very smooth with sort of fill-in-the-blank features, which, again, is further expanded in other articles. Um, let's see. Uh, we know about all the different options. Psionics here. Uh, we know that, again, the psionic soul sorcerer and the psionic options that we saw will not be the ones that we saw in the psionic options revisited. That has since they dropped that like psionic talent option and have since evolved it even further. So we'll see what the final version of that is. Um, again, new spells and magic items in Tico. Specifically, we have uh, Tasha's Caustic Brew and Tasha's Otherworldly Guys. Those were named by specific spell name that we'll have in there. They also mentioned, um, what else? Uh, magical artifacts, like I told you about the branch and the novel. There's also gonna be a magical cauldron. And one of them is the Taraka deck, like the Taraka deck, not a prophetic you know, tarot deck, uh, which apparently can be used to trap spirits. So if you wanna live out your Ghostbusters fantasies, like I always do, that's how you could do that. Uh, again, further information, sidekicks will be there in full blown uh, all of its full glory. Um, and then again, linear systems, ton of new class options, alternate features, spells, and feats combined to give players a bunch of different options. We can take a look at some art. Here is our psionic uh, soul sorcerer here as a tiefling. Uh, we have some new uh, homunculi, right? So this could be for your artificer. Here's Tasha outside of Baba Yaga's hut. Here is a magical... I'm assuming this is the Demonomicon because Tasha wrote that. It says it's made with demon scales. We have some elves and a pool, a merfolk. Here's a wizard. I'm guessing this is an archivist wizard or a wizard using some kind of psychic spell. Maybe this is Mind Sliver, I think I read somewhere. Uh, here's a couple of sidekicks. We have a turtle, a winged kobold, and a kenku. And then here's the alternative cover. You can see Grazd in the background. Again, Tasha's had romantic entanglements with Grazd in the past, so that makes sense. And then here's some of the options we were talking about, those magical terrains, right? This is basically a storm cloud made of undead skulls and things. All right, so that's the Nerdarchy article. Let's jump over to the Polygon article and see if... They, I don't think they had too much in here uh, other than de eberroning the, um, the group patron idea. Uh, yeah, no, that was useless. So we're going to move on from them. Let's go to IGN. IGN had a lot, I think. They also touched on briefly the D&D celebration. Maybe I'll make a separate video on that, um, but they're basically going to go over some more stuff uh, on this at the end of the year, similar to D&D Live, which I hope is better executed. Um, okay, 22 uh, updated UA subclasses, five reprints, updated version of the Artificer. So it says updated. I don't know if updated means just de or if they will actually update the class itself, including new infusions and stuff like that. New class features, updated imported from UA. I'm gonna assume that that means the class feature variants. New player feats, new character lineage options that allows player to divest their character race. We'll talk about that more. Some other groups have better information on that. Full, uh, full uh, chapter full of new spells, magic items, and high level artifacts. Group patrons, uh, and then the DMs tools. We have expanded sidekick rules, rules for running magical or supernatural environments, and a full section of puzzles from veteran TRPG designer, Elisa Teague. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Uh, they mention, again, the, the Elfie McElpherson comes up in every one of these articles. That really stuck with people. 
Um, but it says, but if you want your elf to have skipped a longbow training or speak a language other than Elvis, Elvish and have a bonus to charisma instead of dexterity, Tasha's Cauldron is going to give you the ability to do so and make it done very easily. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the IGN article. Let's go over to sci-fi. Okay. Uh, almost every single one of them made it into the game. That pretty much sign lines up with what I had told you there. Um, psionic mind and armor subclasses are going to be in the book. Uh, Eberron from the Last War uh, will have the Diebron version of the Artificer. Five other previously published subclasses. We've talked about those. Uh, well, along with the new subclasses, the book will also have new ways to customize base classes, like granting rangers new primal beast options to summon. So again, that's going to be from the class feature variants. Um, okay, let's see. We have this option of creating... Uh, we talked about this. This is saying the same thing with the elf here. Again, Elfie McElpherson. Uh, so that's the same stuff we had there we just mentioned. Uh, oh, okay. Arata for Volo's Guide. We've learned our lesson. Uh, orcs and other monstrous races were supposed to be special cases, but the implications and player backlash prompted wizards to make the change. Uh, other sections of the book will give prompts to the group patron. We'll also have rules for sidekicks. Another section uh, will have DM puzzles. Magical environments are another new addition. A few of these include an eldritch storm filled with undead beings, a mimic colony, a mirror realm, enchanted springs, and worlds that fold space on itself. Crawford said several of these environments are ideal for high-level play. Uh, the magical tattoos and new magical items. Uh, new spells include the Mind Sliver Cantrip, so that's probably what we saw that art, that thing for. Tasha's Caustic Brew, Tasha's Otherworldly Guys. Um, and then a little bit more about Tasha, 192 pages. Okay. The Inverse article. Right, we're just kind of skimming through these to catch up on things we missed out on. Just as Xanathar commented on things in his guide to everything, Tasha's comments on different bits boiling inside her cauldron. So it's going to have the same tone where you had like the little notes in the margin from Xanathar. Uh, you're going to have the same kind of comment. It's written in a perspective as though from Tasha. Um, deepens the character customizations. Here's a closer look. Okay. Uh, dramatic rebranding. Nods to her past are incorporated in the book. Here again, we have our psionic mind sorcerer here and our art L artillerist artificer. Here's the reprinting. Uh, its inclusion in the book also contains the Circle of Stars Druid and Fey Wanderer Rangers. So that means stars is confirmed and Fey Wanderer Rangers. So those were on my list of 22. So that's uh, more confirmed there. Um, there will even be a selection of features you can add to the base class itself. So rather than customizing a character via a traditional subclass, there will be adjustments that can be made directly to the class. That's the class feature variants we were talking about. Uh, here's the, again, yeah, using a psychic mind, uh, mind sliver spell. Uh, there we can see that. So that's what that is. Uh, one of the more unique additions is a set of variant rules that allow player to customize uh, their background. This is the lineage, lineage system here. Just as Tasha herself had this amazingly magical origin, many D&D characters have special origins that their players come up with, backstories that set them apart from one another. We wanted to incorporate that in the book. Um, in more concrete terms, at the start of the chapter on character customization, players will find a template they can use to create a lineage that's not directly connected to the typical race and background options. Players will be able to incorporate and modify specific racial traits from across the myriad of options to better reflect the story you have in mind for your characters. It'll also come with many new feats for players to choose from. There's even a Diebaronized version of the group patron. All things, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's that. Let's jump to the gaming trend article. So we see we're getting a lot of stuff, but each one is giving us a little bit more information. All right. Treat for Rangers. Beastmaster will get new companions in the form of three primal beasts. Spells and magic items. Caustic Brew. Tasha's Otherworldly Guys. We talked about that. Magic tattoos plus a collection of magic items available to spellcasting classes. I heard confirmed the one spell that's going to improve your unarmored armor will be in it in one of the Twitter videos, so that explains that. Uh, there will even be some artifacts, including a Baba Yaga-themed artifact, a Demonomicon, and an art artifact level to rock deck. So that's probably the Demonomicon right here. Um, okay, group patrons. Here's more again. Uh, Eldritch Storms, Mirror Realm, a Mimic Colony, Enchanted Springs, and Unearthly Roads that fold space like a wormhole. 
Also, there's a section just dedicated to incorporating puzzles into your game, something to add a little variety to the standard dungeon crawl. Um, okay, that's it. All right, then the majority of it's going to come from this Gizmodo article, which is massive in comparison. So, um, okay, scrolling through. A few Tasha spells, because we figured if we're going to have a book named after Tasha, we need to add some more spells. Uh, she's one of the most storied characters in the multiverse. She was raised by the arch hag Baba Yaga herself. Tasha goes on in her life to become a great adventurer in the world of Greyhawk, rubbing shoulders with other Greyhawk luminaries, and even becoming a friend of the frenemy of people like Morden Kanan. Um, she also has all this dark past. She transforms into a demigod like figure, renames herself Igwilv, and then becomes a rival to many DD adventures and some classic stories set in her vast. Uh, so her history is vast. Uh, while Tico gives us materials from across her history, uh, it's not a book about her specifically. Um, primarily seen through her lens, through notes, she leaves uh, littered around new spells, items, mechanics, uh, and more. Uh, okay, personality comes through these notes. We're not worried about that. Uh, serves as an inspiration for important additions. The source book includes a new section, fundamentally rewrites character creation. Just as Tasha had this amazingly magical origin, we want everybody to have that as well. Um, okay. So, for example, elves get a plus two dexterity, the dark vision trait, and are proficient with perception as baseline. These racial guidelines are also including include alignment suggestions. Going back to elves, currently the dark-skinned drow subrace and entire people are described in the player's handbook as more often evil than not. In Tico, players are given the framework to throw all these mandated traits and benefits out the window and build their own, regardless of the race they want to choose for their character. We provide new rule options that allow you to take the form of traits into your character's race, elf, dwarf, half-orc, or something else, and modify those traits so they can better reflect the story you have in mind for your character. Uh, we include in this book a template for creating a lineage for your character that is completely disconnected from any of the race options in the game. It's basically just us saying fill in the blanks. It's not just the first step of character creation. Uh, the book supports more ways to customize the growth and development of your characters in 5e. I think the thing that's going to surprise people is how much liberty they have to customize their character. There's a bunch of new feats in this book, and if you combine them with the new class feature options, the new subclasses, the ability to create your own lineage or to customize an existing race, the group patrons, or even the ability to have your character have magical tattoos on their body, combine them with new magic items and new spells. There are even more new levers and people will be able to use custom uh, use to customize their characters than even Xanathar's had to offer. So that's a lot to unpack. That's basically, again, confirming the new subclasses, the feats, the class feature variants. And this lineage feature is something I think I, I will obviously make a separate video on, but it's very interesting because I can already see that this is going to make some people upset. But it also potentially, I don't know how it's structured, right? Because I'm only speculating on what I've heard. But I don't know how this is going to change, uh, like, as far as, like, meta power gaming goes. Because, like, if I can just pick and choose everything, and maybe I'm only seeing it through that lens. I'm sure there's, I get the, I like the idea of customizing my character, my race, and making it my own and making it unique. But I guess there has to be parameters around how many different pieces you can take from different races to boil it all into one, right? Like, oh, let's take dark vision of 120 feet. Let's take the extra damage from the half orc. Let's take, uh, I don't know, uh, let's grab some spell casting from this class and some weapon training from this class. It just depends on how it's, you know, how it's handled, I think will be important. Uh, all right. So side click uh, includes rules for sidekick classes. Uh, first re uh, detailed in the uh, revamped essentials kit. Originally an accompanying character that leveled alongside your character, now players can choose to take on the side click classes for themselves, the warrior, the expert, the spellcaster, for a simpler D&D experience. We've turned sidekick classes in response to feedback to be as easy to dive into as possible. I think many players are going to look at these options and say, you know what, I just want a sort of chill, easy D&D experience, focus on role playing, focus on story. Those sidekick class options are going to be a great path for some players to walk down to have that kind of simple experience. So that's actually something I hadn't thought of about like, <clears throat> I just want to kind of, I don't want to say check out because that gives a, a poor connotation, but I want to just take a back seat, 
let the role play drive it. I don't want to focus too much on managing spells and all this kind of stuff. So I'll just play a subclass, a psychic class. Again, also a great way, rather than having it be tied specifically to you, to get new players into the game, whether you want to try to get a significant other, a parent, a child, you know, co-workers, whatever it is, into D&D, but you don't want to overwhelm them with all the options, you can say, well, here's some pretty, you know, here's some simplified rules. What do you like the idea of? Let them do that. And then maybe, ideally, I'm sure this is the thought process, they play this and they're like, oh man, this is cool. I'd love to have more options. And you say, well, now let's make you a real character using the other rules. And then obviously there's all these new rules to expand it even further. Um, so, um, just talking about Chris Estrade. We put this in the book with Player's Handbook, uh, you know, which asks, you know, asks you like, you know, choose character types and you may pick elf. Everything said about elves, including their racial traits, is really that about creating the sort of archetypical adventuring elves. It's Elfie McElverson, as we've heard that before. Um, all right, so they want to disentangle the two. We've heard that thus far. What's in the player's handbook means that uh, Tasha adds to 5th edition, even as game-changing it is for D&D, is still optional material. If people want to make a character like they always have, they can. It's just now that there's an alternative. Uh, but if you want your elf to skip long sword training, okay, so that answers that. Still more in this article, by the way. Um, again, everything in this book is optional, just like in the Xanathar's Guide. This is an optional expansion to the game. One of the things that we've maintained throughout the life of 5th edition is that you can always play only with the core box if you want to. Anything beyond the core books is optional. That said, we expect a lot of groups will adopt this new option to customize their character's origin because we know a lot of people would really love when they're making their character to not feel like the fact that they picked a dwarf. For instance, this uh, feeling that it forces me to hand in particular... Uh, uh, forces my hand into particular character classes. It's going to really open up for people that they can play the type of character they want to play. Um, let's see. Another major choice and source of vast player feedback with Tico officially inducts into 5e is some D&D fans will uh, already be intimately familiar with, the Artificer class. Um, okay. So a lot of people wanted it. We've taken the whole class as it appears here in Tico. We've tweaked little bits so it's home in any D&D world. We've also added some new infusions as well as a new subclass, the Armor, which is another piece of content that appeared in UA that people loved. Um, 22 additional classes, five reprints. Many of the subclasses that appeared over the last year in Unearthed Arcana appear in this book because the sequence of subclasses that we shared with D&D fans online over the past year has been some of the most highly rated subclasses we've ever done. Uh, based on playtest feedback that we've received, uh, balanced so that they play pretty well next to each other. So it's going to lead to everyone getting brand new options for classes they already love, and now suddenly their classes get to feel new all over again. Um, represents the next major step for D&D as it exits, uh, exists in 2020. It's a bold reimagining of the game, uh, fundamental aspects to better reflect the ideals and identities, identities of the people that play it, and an expansion of those fundamentals based on those players' thoughts and feedbacks. I often like to say our work on the game is a conversation with the community that never ends. And it's a delightful conversation because the community does such a good job of sharing this with us that they want us to see the game we all love. Uh, what they want to see in the game we all love. And then we go to our workshop and make sure we deliver the best as we can. So that was a 30 minute video, but I wanted to make sure I dove into as much detail as I could. So I gave you, so now based on reading all these, we have 100% confirmed Armorer, Artificer, Creation Bard, Stars, Druid, Fey Wanderer, Ranger, Psionic, Sorcerer, and Genie Warlock. Maybe things will be updated as time goes on. I gave you what I think the 22 classes will be. We have five subclasses, potentially with the options for the Order, Domain, Blade Singer, Wizard, and Spores Druid to receive updates. I'm also curious to see what the updates to all of these UA classes, because obviously they were play tested and then feedback will make its way into, um, you know, make it way into what the final product we're going to see in the book is. I'm also going to go back and review these myself because I don't remember some of these, like the Watcher's Paladin. I really don't even remember what that was about. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see some of these that stick in my mind, like the Wildfire Druid was one that I remember I really liked. 
And I think I really like the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, but I have to double check. I don't even remember the Archivist Wizard either. So either way, uh, a lot of stuff there. Good news though, right? We're getting a ton of new options. You can expect the typical Nerd Immersion style coverage that you grow known to love here as soon as the book comes out. I will try and cover everything as best I can, as fast as I can. I'll also be doing a giveaway as I do with all of these books, right? So as a reminder, folks, I do still have a giveaway of the limited edition copy of Mythic Odysseys of Theros going on. This is gonna end basically the day before Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden comes out. So then I will be doing a giveaway of two limited edition covers of Icewind Dale as soon as those come out. And then in November, when this launches, I'll be doing a giveaway of a limited edition cover of that as well. So thank you all so much for watching. Sorry it was a little bit long, but I thought I'd be as extensive as I could be. And of course, as per usual, as soon as I release this video tomorrow, there'll be like a ton of new updates with new information. But, uh, you know, what? I'll do what I can. So thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't taken a moment to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it if we if you did so. I do try and cover as much of this stuff as I can, as fast as I can, uh, sometimes at the benefit of my own personal health and sleep schedule. But I want to make sure I get the content out to you as soon as I can. And uh, I really do appreciate all the positive comments. And thank you to so many of you for linking me all of the different articles and things saying like, hey, I don't know if you saw this, check this out, it's got more information. I really do appreciate that. It helps me reduce uh, my efforts in research when you guys just send me stuff. And then, hey, it also prompts me to make videos about it too. So thank you again to my patrons on Patreon and I will see you all next time.